sometimes it's really I can get like deep and start drawing and modeling and you know mm -hmm. like I'm finally starting to get a little of that shelf in my painting mm -hmm. recently. I've seen that. Yeah, I was looking. You, yeah. yeah. And I've been so afraid to even try that, to even go into that, just kind of surrender to it for a while. Why? Um, one is, piece of it is, I'm so afraid of making something that looks like I tried too hard uh, uh -huh. and failed. Right. So, you know not trying but having it be fresh and spontaneous feels easier mm -hmm. but not as satisfying mm -hmm. you know without the possibility of failure there's just not the same feeling of victory <laughs> you know yeah it seems like I don't know all your work but it seems like there's a lot more depth like even like literally on the picture plane? You mean but it recently? Seems, yeah, the recent stuff. It feels like you're, it's like really a world you're crafting now. Yep. That you're really letting us step inside of. Yep. And before it was really, or it's, since JFK, it's been really more just about language and thought and yeah. kind of gesture. Yeah. Well, why don't you show me some of the, what's, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Well, okay. Yeah, where do we start? Oh, are we going? Okay. No. Oh, oh, okay. Do you want me to go? Oh, just tell me what to talk. I'm just pretending that we're not going. So oh, I'm oh. Nervous. Yes, anyway. So, yeah, you know, like, little things that are start to, start to appear. Like, I, got, I started getting into this, you mm. know? And, mm -hmm. um... And I guess maybe what's been happening for the last 10 or 12 years since I started painting, I didn't start painting until I was 30, um, but I think it's been less of a process of refining and more of just gathering mm. ideas, styles, you know, um, mm. technique. Um, so... I feel what's coming, maybe, is being able to have a range of, um, a range of, kind of aesthetic stuff going on in one piece, mm -hmm. you know, so, like, the bad drawing and the just more gestural expressive stuff and then areas that, like, hone in and go deep and quiet into making something real. Mm -hmm. um, that's this, I don't know why it's happening with cats, but like with this cat too. Mm -hmm. Like I'm really liking having, <laughs> you know, this quick expressive stuff and then you can kind of go deep into the paint. Mm -hmm. um, so we were talking about this a little bit before, but now that I'm recording, Mm -hmm. Talk again a little bit about the process for you, like how you were saying it might be dark, but you're not feeling dark. Okay. Like, talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, we were talking about um, uh, making work that's personal and about difficult emotions, and um, that's a lot of my work is like that. But while I'm working, I am not like... <laughs> uh, the pain, <laughs> like, uh, uh. like I'm like thinking more about just the formal aspects of what I'm making. Like, okay, oh, okay now I need some to balance this color over here, and um, and I think what's going on is just like completely sublimating mm. emotions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into the work. And here's another side point. Some of the best artists and writers, like um, <sighs> Murakami, was that a Japanese guy? He, he wrote a like, book about writing, like what we talk about when we talk about writing or something like that. And um, he had no self-awareness. Like mm. he's this brilliant novelist and 
go super deep into characters and the human experience, and he has no understanding of like his own emotions. He's completely mm. like clueless. Like, well, I just write the stuff. I don't know why, you know. And I think that that's actually can be like mm. uh, helpful. Well, I think uh, when I was reading on your website, you were talking even about like the influence of outsider art on yeah. your work. And something that's so interesting to me is like in the art world, especially now, you have to have so much like meta layers like the meta understanding of what you're doing. Yeah. But so much of the work that I actually connect with comes from that more outsider art place. Right. So what is it for you? I mean, because you started... Yeah. No, I... I... Okay. To get really meta on it, I also connect more with an outsider art just look, aesthetic, and... I think the difference between what I do and what an outsider artist does is that I'm choosing to work in that aesthetic because it's a more raw and more immediate representation of just very visceral mm. aspects of what it is to be a person. Mm -hmm. But I also know, I mean, I'm choosing to work that way. Mm. And I'm choosing to try to operate in the world of fine art because I believe that the world of fine art, which is kind of the representative of culture, of people who, like, have some perspective on what's going on in history and context, mm -hmm. I think there's a place for personal, emotional, um, intimate work in that. Mm -hmm. So... Are you finding that place? Uh, I don't look very hard because I just get overwhelmed by all that. But recently I've been noticing among the kind of like the next generation, like people in the early 20s, they're into this, hmm. this look. It's mm -hmm. like coming back around. I feel like it got really kind of designy and digital Maybe because we were all like, ooh, the internet, ooh, digital stuff, cool, that's the new thing. And now these 20-somethings are like, ugh, I want some, like, messy paint and and some brush strokes and, like, bad drawing. Mm -hmm. And they are, like, seeing my work and be like, hey, come, lady, come be in our show, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I have hope that that's just kind of a backlash happening, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's an interesting piece because I even feel really challenged around where is the place in the art world for my work? Because I think, well, and I'm sure I, this brings like, I'm so curious about how people respond to your work, which I think is part of why even in the art world sometimes it's like people are not all about transformation and really diving in. No. Even in the place that's where you not would cool. definitely expect it to happen, right? Yeah. If any place... Aside from your therapist's office, you'd think the art world would have space for it. But I find it actually doesn't quite no. often. And in, in fact, it's kind of embarrassing and not really right. serious. So I think we just have to make our own, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, <laughs> it, why do you want to be part of a world that's just like, ugh, that's so uptight, that's so boring, that is so like not even deep intellectually? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not even, it's not, it's like supposed to be like super conceptual and intellectual. And it's like, no, that's just kind of obvious. Yeah. And the political stuff, you know, that's like racism is bad. And I'm going to make this like really weird, like abstract sculpture that doesn't give you any emotional feeling at all. But the statement about this is that racism is bad. So this is important work. Right. Because we all agree racism is bad. And we're not racist because we like this work. It's just like, okay. <sighs> Have you confronted anything? <laughs> yeah. dealt with anything? No. On a real level. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's, like I often think about now when I look at artwork, it's like it's either addressing sort of the head or it gets into the body. But quite often the art world is like head. It's like floating heads walking around thinking and talking about everything. But it's not necessarily experiential. No. And I, 
And even people who are doing work that probably comes from an experiential place have to kind of translate it up into the head for the art world. Right. You know, right. like it's a, you wouldn't actually say why you make this. Yeah. But I, I see work that looks like it's embodied or whatever, you know, and that for mm-hmm. the person to keep doing this, they must be feeling something. Yeah, yeah. Once in a while you see that. So what, so talk to me about how people respond to your work. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, there's different, different responses. Yes. There are the people who are like, um, you know, who just want like really commercial, easy, like corporate looking work. And they want like open studios. Like they'll walk in and they'll go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and make a beeline for the door. Yeah, and they'll, be, and they'll, and they'll just go cool. like, wow, you're a wild one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, kind of, I'll put it in two camps. I'll keep it simple. And then there's the people <laughs> who walk in and they're like, thank you. Oh. Yes. Oh my God! Oh. Ha, 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 ha. Oh. oh, I know. Thank you. Like that, you know. And I live for those people. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> there aren't. I, I mean, they usually don't have money or power. Because. <laughs> um, right. This world just isn't working out so well for them. Yes. And, you know, that's why they like it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Um, are there any other people? Yeah, that's the kind of the problem. It's like the people who really like it are not the people who run things. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Because it really is, it is like an expression of, like, all this is so fucked up and damaging me. So for people who are like, yeah, this is my kingdom. It's like, they don't want to see all that. No, not disrupt the civilized structure. Yeah. Mm-mm, that doesn't fly. Yeah. So I don't know if, you know, you got to try to like get to their humanity somehow. Mm. I kind of don't think you do it through art. Mm. I think art is more of a beacon of something you already kind of are looking for. Like, oh yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. I think what, you know, wakes those people up is like great tragedy and death and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And coming to the end of their power somehow. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. How did you come to painting? I um, started writing when I was like 23. Mm -hmm. When I was woke up from like a drug and alcohol fog and was like, who am I? What am I? I don't even know how to live. Mm. And I started writing and had some sense of the creative process being like creating some kind of self, Mm. making sense of how to get through a day. And then that got really, um, I was really young and so desperate for some kind of direction and so scared of everything. And and that just got into this huge ego thing with writing. Just like, I couldn't, mm. I, cu- I just kind of wrote myself into a corner and just eventually just mm. quit. I was just like, I have to quit this. It's, mm. The pressure is too much and it's just not, I can't, you know, I just couldn't go anywhere with it. And I quit writing and then that was a big turning point in my life. I think I was like 28 or 29 and I just, I had nothing. And... Then, out of, I remember the day, I was, like, walking, and I just started seeing things, like, colors, and, I mean, not things, not imagine, not things, I wasn't hallucinating, I was just seeing, like, I started noticing things, like, visually, and I was like, wow, and I just sort of got really into form and colors, Hmm. and then I just said, I don't want to paint something, and, you know, I just started painting from there, Mm -hmm. and then very quickly felt this, like, this is it. This is the thing. Uh-huh. And 
So it's been like this battle to keep it open and not turn it into my identity and the uh-huh. thing that's going to save me and the thing that's going to represent me to the world. And, you know, so it's kind of been like that ever since. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does it save you to a degree? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. It does. I don't even know why. It's like, mm. I was working in my studio today. I mean, I've been feeling just so lost and hopeless. It's like, because I've just been having to work so much and not really paint. And I do other stuff. I do like little daily drawings and this and that, like, you know. But something about painting, I don't know what it is, but I paint and then all that falls away. Mm. And. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Hmm. Hmm. Like in, in general in your life or just in terms of No, painting? I'm just supposed to be painting. You're supposed to I don't be know painting. how to deal with anything else. That's, the, <laughs> that, that's like this thing you always return to. Yeah. Yeah. Like it doesn't make me be like, oh, now it makes sense. This is how I'm going to make my living and this is how I'm going to show my work. And no. this is how, I, like, yeah. I, don't, I still don't know how to do any of that, but I do know that painting makes me just feel like it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. I have the same thing. Really? Yeah, it's like, always, whenever I return to what I'm actually supposed to be doing, especially if I stray from painting for a while, Yeah. it's like, I just need to paint. It's like, it's that, like, just desire and, like, visceral, like, I just need to paint. I just need to paint. So do you have a lot of fear about getting back into painting and resistance? I always have resistance every single time I show up in the studio. There's, like, a degree of resistance. Me too. Same thing. Oh, my God. What do you do with it? eat something (laughs) I okay I I might um just let it totally destroy me and I'll end up like depressed for two days like paralyzed on my couch not having painted not painting right and crying and eating too much and yeah that's what happens sometimes but when I actually um I don't know today I was just like Fuck it. Mm. Time to paint. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just do it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, once I get in there, well, it's, it's a heightened state. Yeah. You know, and I get into it like a heightened state and it can be, it can be terror, anxiety, or it can just, I can just see it as this is the fuel that you need to go and do a painting. Mm. And the reason it feels all like this right now is because you're not painting and it has nowhere to go. So you just got to go in and channel it. And then, it's, yeah. and then it's so intense. I've been in there for however many hours today, just like in growth, like it's like life or death in there. Mm-hmm. And I'm painting like the most ridiculous things, you know, <laughs> just the cursory how absurd this is. Like it's life or death for me to get this hand on this like rainbow dick, uh, right? Uh, uh-huh. It's like life or death, and it's just like re- the most ridiculous image. Dude, I love that because there. I don't even know how to formulate this because I've just been thinking about that. Like this, I have this feeling quite often, like what I'm doing, it's so important. And on one hand, it is. There is a level of importance, but it's like I'm starting to really question what is that like that thinking like. Yeah. So important that I do this thing, that I explore this stuff. And if I say it out loud or in a different form, like if I talk about what I'm going to explore, I just feel like I'm 13 again. Yeah. (laughs) Versus if I bring it into the painting, then I'm like, yeah, this is good shit. Like this means something. This does something. Something happens. Yeah. In that place. I guess whatever, you know, the images are, whatever the product is of what we're making... I don't even know if that is the point. (laughs) You know? It may be just the vehicle for, you know, bringing chaos into order in some way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For yourself as the maker or also for the audience? Because I think both are really... I think for me, at least, when it comes to actual art, it's about both. Yeah. That's doing something for both. Yeah. I mean, if nobody... God, I wonder what it would be like if nobody responded in any positive or interested way to my art. I don't know if I would do it. 
Thank you for saying that. I don't know if I would either. And maybe you shouldn't. If nobody, there are plenty of people who, I, oh, that's horrible. I don't know. But I don't know. Maybe that's telling you something, you know? If nobody responds. Yeah. 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 I mean, even a few, a few people responded to Van Gogh. Even if it's just a few. Yeah, I know. I know that kind of validation and somebody, I think it's also somebody seeing us and seeing that. I mean, we can see each other's gifts. Yeah. And just communicating, hard. knowing yeah. that you're communicating. Yeah. It's not so much about expression as communication. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know how this feels for you, but I've gotten pretty comfortable with realizing I'm a, I'm a pretty crazy person. I'm like a highly functional, really stable, crazy person. Yeah. And it's actually been really comforting to just acknowledge the craziness. Like, yeah, I'm crazy right now. I'm feeling com like I'm about to lose my mind crazy right now. Yeah. How do you relate to craziness? I am, I'm really crazy. I know I am. Some people who know me well know I am too. Um, I mean, there's crazy in the sense of willing to experience, you know, heightened states or, you know, willing to not just buy the program mm. and find, try and find your own way. Mm -hmm. That can seem really crazy. Mm -hmm. Then there's the craziness that's just self-destructive. Right. And I have some of both. Like mm -hmm. the creative crazy and then just the self-destructive, like hating on some aspect of myself for no reason. That's mm. just pathological. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. I almost think that the cra that kind of crazy and the like creative exploratory crazy, like maybe I have to have the other to keep me from like be being really crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like really just dangerous <laughs> or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where does all this come from? The art, the images. Yeah, mean? the images, the, the text, the... Well, you know, I guess it comes from a combination of my own stream of consciousness and stuff that I've overheard, stuff floating around in the culture. I mean, I, I, someone said this, this girl said this, <sighs> you know, and I, it, mm -hmm. I said, yeah, you, you know, you don't. And then, like, a month later, it came out there. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, I feel like a lot of it is responding. Like, American soil. I don't know. That's something people say about when they're talking about war all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, just things like that. Liter literature. What is it like? Isn't there something called, isn't there a book called Death, Be Not, or Death, Be Not Proud, or... I don't know if that, there may be. I don't know. You know, so there's death. I am mm. proud. I don't know. Mm. Um, I mean, it's a lot of the like more spontaneous kind of one liner stuff I do, I think, is just kind of clearing just kind of uh, all the stuff that's been thrown at me from inside and outside is stuck, and it's just kind of like clearing away all the words and thoughts and. Hmm. And and you know so there's that, and then the stuff that's like more like this, mm -hmm. the more painting stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is really comes maybe from a deeper place, more like where dreams come from. Mm -hmm. Wherever dreams come from, I feel like, mm -hmm. which is probably a combination of my unconscious and the collective unconscious, and mm -hmm. you know archetypes and all that. Do you have to be careful with how much you let in? Like how much you're out in the world or how much stimulus you give yourself? Yeah. Well, it's a very fine balance. Like, too much stimulation and I'm crazy. 
not enough stimulation, then I'm crazy. Right. Like, because then I'll, I'll like, overstimulate, look out of boredom, and it gets really weird. So, you know, I need kind of, like, just the right amount. <laughs> yeah. Of st stuff that's, like, visually stimulating, intellectually stimulating, socially, but not too much. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's tricky because it's a very narrow bandwidth of uh, uh, where it's okay. <laughs> it's easy to get it wrong. Yeah. When you were saying something earlier about um, routines and structure in your life. Yeah, I, I think I, I do really well with a very set routine a very simple structure like ideally it would be get up you know do my little sketchbook work meditate go for a walk paint till noon have lunch paint from one to four rest from four to five have dinner read a book watch a movie go to bed mm -hmm. that'd be it mm -hmm. And then on the weekends, I would, like, do something really exciting, like, go see one show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and maybe, like, once a year or twice a year, go on, like, a month-long vacation to somewhere. Travel someplace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not, like, whirlwind tour of Europe, but that's, like, go stay in, you know, some shack. Actually be someplace. Yeah. Really be someplace, yeah. Wouldn't that be great? God. I'm the same way. Really? Oh my God. And yet Structure you're like... and discipline. But okay, do you how how does that I mean, do you are you able to create that for yourself? Yeah. I mean I'm I'm still trying to negotiate all of that, you know, especially doing work for other people and making money things. But even within that I'm pretty fierce about like I get up at this time, I go to the gym three days a week. The other two, I walk to my studio. I do this on my walk. These are like my meditations. See, that's why you have this amazing website and these books and all this stuff. I guess I'd be a nut job otherwise. <laughs> but yeah, the discipline. I need that container. Like I need that structure. I, I need, need that... it, and I and I am like fighting against it mm. constantly. Like I wake up in the morning like braced. Mm. Right. For the battle that's about to begin. Yeah, yeah, yeah Between yeah. knowing what I needed, should do, and then wanting to... What is it I want to do? I want to just, like, mm -hmm. disappear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have to be careful not to go too far, definitely. Like, I could afford to be a little more spontaneous at certain moments, or just ask myself, what do I really want to do right now? And there's a lot that comes in when I break free of the routine. Mm. But again, it's like you're saying, it's a really delicate balance. Well, that hearing you say that you keep it, that inspires me to really, I mean, there have been times in my life where I've actually had it written down like hour by hour, what I'm doing. Yeah. And when I stick to that, it's great. I know it works, right? Yeah. It really, really works. I calm down a lot. Oh, yeah. It's not like constantly deciding next yeah yeah and it's all built around the pieces that I know are essential right like tainting eating exercise I know <laughs> and maybe a little social something. yeah a little bit yeah, yeah. and a book books yeah. and books <laughs> it's like, I know I know it yeah I think it's an interesting one because I definitely like as artists you know, especially so many people have these conceptions of what the artist's life is like, and I sit around in cafes all day and that sort of thing. But, yeah, I know. But it's amazing to me, just like that piece around discipline that, I mean, I'm like the, I'm like athlete slash artist in that sense, where it's like, I'm training, I'm training, you know? I'm, wow. Because I feel like I just can't, I, I don't do well. I really spin out really easily. Me too. Really well, okay, so, you know, me too, and I do gardening for my money, mm. and I've been getting it set up so that um, I'm, I'm going to have two weeks where I work, mm. five days a week, every day, all, all day, well, mm -hmm. full time, and then I have two weeks 
off completely. Mm. And we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, the two weeks that I'm gardening, I am kind of spun out. Yeah. Because I'm just not getting what I need. But I've tried to do it where I garden three days a week and then paint two days, and there's just too many transitions. Mm -hmm. Can't that is too hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. So I'm gonna. See, I, over the last, I don't know, three months has been like just getting a bunch of new clients and getting it all lined up to start this thing where I'm going to be able to go on and off. Get that structure. Yeah. yeah. And then just to really know that while I'm gardening, I don't have to, I, I, you know, it's like that is all I need to do. Because mm. the painting period is coming. Yes. It'll be there. Yeah. I've like carved out the chunk of time right it's impending and enjoy not having the yeah. pressure to paint right, right you know yeah and know it's coming and because as it is it's like I'm kind of like but I got to be painting Ugh, but I have to go to work Ugh. I know it's such a battle yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can get really into a bad like self-pity like I shouldn't have to work mode that's not helpful. Mm, mm, you yeah. know, like I have I, I have found something that has saved me. Yeah. I shouldn't have to work now. I'm really good at it and this is what I'm here to do. Yeah. I know. But part of me, I don't know, I'm I'm hoping that that's actually a possibility for more of us. Cause I really I don't know, I feel like it's so powerful and it's such a gift and it's like it is so consuming. It's so consuming. It, like, even yeah. like we were talking earlier that I need time after I paint. I need time after social experiences. Like, I can't just keep go work, 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 do this, do this, do this. I know. Like, it just doesn't, it does, it's not sustainable. I feel like I'm usually pretty depleted, yeah. actually. I'm usually in a mode of depletion. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And at some point, you run out and... You don't have any, you can't do anything. You can't yeah. paint anymore. Yeah. I've hit that wall. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I'll get a little bit more back in the well and then run that out. And it's just. Mm hmm But your, your routine, mm -hmm. your schedule, that is very nourishing. Yeah. You know what I love around all of this? I don't know what his daily life looks like, but even the metaphors he works with in his work is Matthew Barney. Right? Because he was a jock. Yeah. He was totally a jock. And he uses these metaphors about, like, to build muscles, you tear them down first. You need resistance. An athlete goes to the gym oh all the time. They have coaches. Like, I know. And it's, I, yeah, it's like most of us are the, you know, the, know. the artist jock thing does not usually go together. But there's something about that. I know. Kind of discipline. It's just, I know. And you don't think, you just do. Yeah. Yeah. I have so, I have a lot of resistance to that whole way of being. To not thinking and just doing? Yeah, to just the, like, well, if you don't feel like it, you just do it. You know, oh, yeah. the, the buck up and... Oh, yeah. Duh. But, I mean, that's kind of what you got to do. Okay, do you know the Enneagram? Yeah. Are you a four? Nine. You're a nine? be a really so, healthy nine. As far as I know, I'm a nine. Yeah. What are you? A four. You're a four. Uh-huh. I'm surprised that you're a nine. Yeah? Yeah. The nines, nines are motivated by comfort. That's pretty significant for me. Surpri I don't think I actually have enough comfort in my life, but I think I think I need to learn how to integrate more of it, but yeah. Hmm. I think that's the unintegrated part, actually. Hmm. It's a part I don't give myself easily. Hmm. Comfort? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Are fours motivated by? Competition and envy. Ah. And lack. I mean, that's in the unhealthy mm, side. Right. A sense of lack and dissatisfaction. Competition and envy. I wouldn't say they're motivated by that. They're actually paralyzed by that. What they're motivated by is their ability to be self-renewing and 
uh, self-generating in or you know the creative process mm hmm I feel like you must be a four you should look into that I've again. thought about it really yeah my I had two friends who were pretty well versed the one wrote his thesis on the Enneagram and it's his girlfriend well wife now who's pretty confident I'm a nine and I really do I, I'm pretty wow. sure I'm a nine yeah I think I fool a lot of people in a lot of ways as well. I mean, I've got the ability to be really sort of outgoing and present, and I don't seem like the person who wants to shrink and hide all right. the time. Or just check out. Yeah. Yeah, nine's kind of, that's where they fall into their or trap, is to just avoid negativity, mm -hmm. avoid negative feelings, check out, everything is okay. I think I'm probably check out more around reality. Mm -hmm. I think I go into the negativity, mm. sort of check out around the reality. Like practical reality. Practical stuff, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, fours. <sighs> fours can be really... Fours are kind of like the, the 